Oh, hello. I kind of wish you were giving this talk because I could hear uh, you talk for 20 more minutes for sure. <laughs> um, all right. So I'm here to talk about pretty PCBs, which is more commonly known as PCB badges in the hardware com open hardware community, and how we can leverage it to invite more people in to learn how to do PCB design. And whatever stage of PCB comfortability you're at, you can still participate in PCB design, is what I think. So who am I? Um, I am very passionate about outreach and uh, trying to get kids involved in STEM early and invite them into STEM in a way that they're interested. And uh, some of the people I partner with to do this. Um, and I think opportunity and talent are not equally distributed in this world. And it's important for us to try to balance that out a little bit and out, uh, provide outreach to kid, kids. <laughs> And then also we need to try to have diversity and inclusion once marginalized people get into STEM so that they stay there and they can thrive and they can participate and be their best self. Um, and my own imposter syndrome um, led me to start making hobby projects. Uh, and then I found like a nice community in the open hardware space where I got to start exploring with electronics more as well as uh, learning how to do PCB design and sharing the, those uh, PCB designs uh, in open source formats. Uh, professionally, um, I have been working on sustainable engineering solutions and working in clean tech to find uh, solutions to some of our immediate problems. One of them is um, trying to make IoT sensors that go in dishwashers in uh, restaurants and um, kitchens so that we can monitor the water consumption and power consumption to reduce that. Um, I worked with Ryobi to electrify some of the lawnmowers and uh, chainsaws and other outdoor products to move away from gas powered tools. Um, and most recently, I worked on strawberry harvesting robots to help farmers grow our food in a more sustainable manner uh, to reduce uh, water as well as uh, chemicals in how um, of food is grown. So even though I have a very traditional path in engineering, I went to college and then I got a professional electrical engineering um, career out of it. Uh, the first time I designed a PCB was after college when I was uh, started working. It was very intimidating. So I don't know if anyone's like tried to design a PCB or have thought about it. I guess show of hands if you've been scared of PCBs because if I had more hands, I would raise it. Uh, so I started thinking about why is this so hard? Um, and these are some of the reasons I think it's hard. It's not really taught in school, even though it's such a core skill uh, to have as an electrical engineer. Um, there are not a whole lot of resources or especially free resources that people can just pick up and learn on their own. Um, but I know that's changing because of KiCad and Sean Heimel has some amazing uh, videos. Not all heroes wear caves, some wear bow ties. So thank you, Sean Heimel. Um, and even the PCBs are everywhere and all our electronic devices, they're often hidden inside. So it's really hard to like take it apart, explore and learn, uh, which is a great barrier for people to learn because that's how a lot of people like to learn. Um, so that just adds to the intimidation of even getting started. But there's an easy way to figure this out. <laughs> as soon as I got into outreach and wanted to teach people how to uh, learn how to do PCB design, when I would show like PCBs and products, everyone would be like, how long did it take for you to learn? Do I have to go to college? How much money do I need to spend? Versus when I started showing pretty PCBs, everyone was like, how do I start? What resources can I use? What colors can I use? And the conversation was way more productive and interesting. Um, so what is a PCB? PCBs are just a, a way to connect electronic components as well as to mechanically support electronic components. And we can make really cool products with it. And I would argue it's as simple as making a sandwich because that's what it is. Um, so how does the PCB sandwich start? We have a substrate, which is basically a fancy glass. 
um, that's there as an insulator. We can't do anything with an insulator. We need a conductor. So what we do is we take thin copper sheets and heat and press on top and bottom of the insulator. So this is like the simplest PCB for two layers, but we can do this for well. <laughs> it was in me. <laughs> I guess it's not as easy as making a sandwich. <laughs> there we go. Yay. <laughs> so now that we have our um, sandwich where we have conductors and insulators going on, what can we do? We can drill a hole, can a, a plate it, uh, the, we can plate the hole so we can connect the top and the bottom layers so our electrons can flow very easily, as well as we can solder through hole components like LEDs and resistors, if you've seen them, in an easy way like this. Um, but there are also surface mount devices, which are more common. Uh, some of the badges I'm wearing today have surface mount devices. And to do that, what we do is like we start removing some of the uh, copper and make pads and we make traces. Um, and then now that we have all these connections going, what else can we do? We want to protect all our traces because there's environmental factors that can uh, affect the traces as well as maybe you'll drop something and short the circuit and you know, blow up all your hard work. So we, we'll use colorful materials, which is kind of like paint called solder mask. And we can flow it all over the PCB and protect all our traces so that they don't short and uh, humidity and other things that can affect it will damage it. As well as like the parts that we do want exposed, like the pads uh, for soldering on all our uh, surface mount components, we can tin it or use gold plated um, on the pads uh, to make our PCBs more functional. And then we can also um, add ink on top of the PCB. Like we can print with ink to mark all our components and identify them, or, or we can make cool graphics with it. So now that we are all kind of familiar with PCBs and it's a little less scary, this is the fun stuff we can do with it. We have this whole palette. We have uh, glass that is um, cool and it's supporting everything. Um, and then we have tin and gold plated uh, layer that we can play around with. And my favorite part is the colorful solder mask that we can play with. We can make cool patterns and do all sorts of textured uh, stuff for that. And then the easiest thing to do is drop graphics on your PCB uh, using the ink that goes on top. Um, Yeah. So how do we even get started? Now that we know what we can do, uh, the way to get started with PCB design is we select what kind of circuit we want to make. So say I want to just turn on three LEDs. I want a battery to turn them on. And I want some resistors to control the current. And then I want a switch to turn it on and off. I start with capturing the schematic in this way uh, that's on the left. And then I import that into a PCB layout software that brings all the footprints and how the components are going to be. And we have our circuit. But it's kind of boring to do square circuits. So let's turn it into a rocket ship, because why not? Let's go to the moon. Um, and then we can define the board shape uh, so that we can do fun things with that. We can move our components around so it looks a little cooler. And then we can make all the connections. So we have all this. We know we can play with colors, so we can choose what solder mask we want and choose what color we want with it. And then we know we can play with ink, and we can do all sorts of fun graphics with that. So that's how I kind of learned how to do PCB. It felt a more approachable, and it felt more fun. And I wanted to invite more people into this process. So I started making PCB badges, and I uh, did a few fun uh, things with that. One of it was. I showed up at this event called the Space Gala that was held to promote uh, gender equity in STEM fields. Uh, this was space-themed, so I made a bunch of space-themed PCBs and made soldering kits uh, out of it. And then we sold all these soldering kits uh, 
at the Space Gala, which was held in the Kennedy Space Center, where a bunch of women in STEM showed up wearing sparkly gowns, and we celebrated. Uh, we sold a bunch of PCB badges, and then we raised money for after-school STEM programs for high school kids. Uh, so there was a lot going on, which was a lot of fun. Um, and then I made uh, flower-shaped PCBs uh, to teach programming uh, as well as electronics to high school kids. So this was around Valentine's Day. So we sent a flower to each kid who, was, who participated in it so that we can build our own flowers. We don't need anyone. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so this was really nice because they kept, uh, they got a chance to keep what they made as well as like they got to play with it. Um, the green on there was like just with a marker and it was just white PCB. Uh, this one's my favorite. I got to participate, work with Reinvented Magazine to reimagine some of the classic princesses um, to show kids that they don't have to choose between being a princess or an engineer we can use both those traits to do whatever you want. You can be kind, you can be generous, you can have ethics, which is so important in engineering. Get all those messages from the princess stories that we grew up with, but we can also use our skills to make cool things. And this was really uh, cool because I could make all these uh, pretty butterfly PCBs and put it on my dress and have a crown. So in the picture, I'm like showing that I'm building my own crown or Cinderella is bring, building her own crown and show all these uh, nice messages to kids so that like when they see it, they're curious about what's going on. What is that sparkly thing? How can I make it? Um, so that was really neat. And we, me, along with some of the other women in STEM, got to show all our um, careers in this fun way of uh, using princesses as a backstory. And we raised, uh, we donated a bunch of calendars to school that was viewed by 80,000 students, which is amazing. And it's um, mostly Title I schools. So the kids who don't usually get exposed to um, engineering uh, careers, uh, they get to see this and approach it in a very friendly manner. And there are also thousands of calendar purchases that we don't know, how, we don't have a way to track, but it's really cool to know that it's out there. Um, so this, uh, I roller skate, uh, and I wanted to make uh, earrings that were skate shape. So I made those and I started wearing them to the skate park. And I just made that for myself, but it sparked so many questions. A bunch of kids would come up and ask like what these uh, earrings are. And I started explaining how they are related to what's inside their phone, for example. And it just sparked a very interesting conversation. So I donated a bunch of these uh, uh, skate PCBs to local skate shops uh, to raise money and then do skating events as well as showing how skating and PCBs are both interesting ways for kids to learn physics. <laughs> and then I use that skating uh, PCB inspiration to make a more functional PCB that has lights as well as an accelerometer uh, with the Arduino board so that I can kind of change colors based on the accelerometer as well as show how physics is uh, used in the skate park when you're going down ramps or carving bowls. There's so much going on and it's a fun way to show that data to kids and get them interested. Uh, and then I used Pikachu uh, <laughs> recently uh, to make um, to spark interest in PCVs again because I found out Pokemon is still popular and I felt relevant for a change, so I jumped on that train. <laughs> um, and then knowing all these basics of PCVs, I wanted to show that you can make PCBs with just simple materials. This is just paper and copper tape, and you can fold it, play with it, and learn how to do PCB design. It's not as scary as it seems. Um, so this is important because um, right now, based on the data that I found, there's not an even distribution of uh, uh, even representation of gender in uh, STEM fields already, especially in PCB design, which is sad because we all use PCBs in our day, every day. So we need more people who use it to be able to design these things. And this was extended also to race. It's not an even distribution of consumers versus makers. Um, 
And the other interesting statistic I found was there's not a very even age distribution. And a lot of younger makers don't have a way to get into PCB design because there's not it's not as approachable. And in the lack of mentorship and not a lack of resources, it gets very hard. So it comes down to people like us to share what we make and then learn how to do this. Because this promotes diversity in STEM fields and maker spaces. It also teaches co complex designs in a very approachable way, because you can learn the basics and then build upon it, and do high-speed design, high-power design, do all sorts of uh, interesting things with it. And just playing with materials and experimenting helps uh, people to learn uh, better, and in return, uh, will probably provide more breakthroughs in PCB technology and more interesting um, results will come out of it. And then just learning how to make stuff uh, is very interesting because you're not depending on other people to make stuff for you. You can make it yourself. So it teaches how to be self-reliant as well as this is my favorite part. I think it teaches people how to repair uh, electronics so you don't, have, you don't throw it away and you won't be contributing to e-waste. If there's a trace that's blown up, like you shouldn't be throwing it away. You can fix it if you understand what's going on. Um, so here's my ask for everyone. If you've been intimidated by PCBs, just pick a PCB, take like a X-Acto knife, scratch some stuff, see what's going on, cut it up, uh, experiment with it, play with it. If you've ever thought of designing a PCB, go try to make a PCB because it's really not as intimidating as it seems. I know y'all can do it. And then share what you learn, share how you do this, share it with the world and teach PCB design because electronics are everywhere and we all need to be able to understand what's going on and learn how to do this. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.